Rex Dart. Code name: Eskimo Spy. Igloo mission log number 212. Seatopia made, if you'll pardon the pun, or not, some rumblings recently. <laughs> a little, little Rex Dart humor there. <clears throat> anyway. Thanks to intel from Dr. Randa, we've suspected since, uh, 1973, that these beetle worshippers utilized the Hollow Earth tunnels during their attempted invasion. Emperor Antonio II's saber-rattling has intensified since he ascended to the throne. He inherited all his father's chest hair, but only half his charisma, which is why Cetopia has remained relatively quiet, despite their long-standing grudge against us surface dwellers. Plus, their spade-handed beetle god was moving to a glorified zoo, yeah, I'd probably be upset, too. I don't know, maybe the UN emissary to Cetopia should suggest opening the country up to tourism. They do wonders for their economy, but I digress. Now, reports have been coming in about a street evangelist, quote-unquote, wearing a toga, shouting at people to, quote, repent or face the wrath of Megalon or something, I don't know. No, I'm sorry, I just find it funny. So-called deity who's afraid of a can of raid. You can't take him seriously, you know, but it's my job. Anywho, Igloo normally dismisses nuisances like this. We're big calling him the, uh, Togavangelist. That's good. Anyway, we just codenamed him that, but he's pretty harmless. We just figured he was a lunatic. But in every city he's been seen, Hong Kong, Seoul, Bangkok, New York, the local hall of worth passageways have been bombed. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. No casualties reported, only minor damages. So the incidents haven't warranted much attention. That was until Agent Yukon alerted us to a Cetopian plot to collapse the Hollow Earth Tunnel Network, causing a chain reaction that would crumple the planet's surface. Crumple! We can't have that. Our scientists have yet to configure that's even possible. But we're not willing to take that risk. Agent Yukon reported, The next few target cities included Oslo, London, Ogasawara. Antonio II, codenamed Electric Boogaloo, is playing a long game. Upon arrival at Oslo Airport Goderman, I saw the ugliest mecca on the planet, Uber Mogra, parked on the runway. I received a tip from one of my contacts, an old friend, we'll call him, uh, JJ, that the Toga Evangelist <laughs> was up to his usual shtick just outside Brogner Park. I rode the fly ticket speed train into the city using the alias... Patrick? Don't know why. Once I arrived, I rented an e-scooter and rode to the park. I could hear him yelling in English from a block away. His diatribe went something like this. The god of Great Cetopia is spoken, you surface dwellers are to be destroyed, the underground tunnels he dug with his mighty drill claws, a gift you dare not squander, shall be your destruction, fear not, he's without mercy, come to Cetopia and declare your loyalty to the great beetle, blah 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 blah, then you'll be spared, and if you don't, I will unleash Megalon, rise up Megalon, destroy our enemies, go on Megalon, yada yada yada, you know the drill. He gestured wildly and reflexively, like he was possessed by the ghost of Robert Dunham. <laughs> Little in joke, but uh, he was taken about as seriously as a bad SNL sketch. Trust me, I've been in a few for mission purposes. Now, as he continued to spit lightning all over the place, I walked up behind him and tapped him on the shoulder. He spun around to look at me, shocked. Got any electric daisies? I asked, grinning. The Toga Evangelist uh, cursed at me. Kind of rude. Then he shoved me, he even rode her. And brandished a key lock or nebula or I... I really don't know. So I've got a gun. Pointed it right at me. The crowd started panicking, and before I could de-escalate the situation, he pulled the trigger. And there was this vapor that came out. It spewed out, blinded me. Cetopian sleep gas. That feed. Well, good thing I have a built-in immunity. And I drank some black coffee that morning, and uh, I was fine. Unfortunately, that gave the uh, Toga Evangelist just enough time to grab my e-scooter and ride away. So now he's a thief. How could this guy be so cruel? I blinked to clear my vision and charged after this guy. He cut through the crowd on the sidewalk, shoving them out of his way and getting the dirtiest Norwegian insults I have ever heard. And I've heard some. Now, this slowed him down just enough so that my hand came within inches of crabbing it. He swerved into the street and sped away between the cars the trams and the buses, I glanced down at the sidewalk, saw a young woman riding another e-scooter. 
and I immediately jumped in front of her. She halted, started yelling at me in Norwegian, but I slapped 100 krone in her hand and grabbed that scooter. She didn't object as I sped down the sidewalk and into the traffic. Sometimes being a well-dressed, very, very handsome, very, very convincing guy with money has its perks. I followed this guy until he arrived in front of the Thawned Hotel, jumped off the scooter, ran inside. And I also abandoned mine and chased him in. And I jogged all manly style right into the lobby and just barely saw him trying to get into an elevator. But I saw him, and I charged forward, barely got slid in through the door. And then I tackled him. Oh yeah, we thrashed each other around, bouncing off the elevator walls, exchanged a couple blows, mostly cheap shots from him. Now, he was a better fighter than most of the Seatopian agents I've fought, but he resorted to a burst of sleep gas from the Megalon face on his headband, and that second dose was... enough to beat my immunity. Yeah, and I stumbled back. Groggier than a teenager after an all-nighter. The Toke Evangelist reared back to punch me, but the door opened, and he ran out onto the roof. I staggered after him, barely keeping the door from closing, and managed to stay conscious just long enough to see him slip on a metal backpack. And then you'll never guess what happened. Megalon wings come out of this thing, yeah. Yeah. He's not gonna win any cosplay contests, but he did help him fly. Yeah, who knew they invented Megalon wing backpacks? Kinda want one, not gonna lie. Anyway, about ten minutes later I woke up. I'd have been disappointed if I weren't Rex Stark. Eskimo spy. Now, I anticipated that Toga 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 might escape, so I planted a tracking device on him while we struggled on the elevator. Oh yeah, I'm that good. Now, the GPS on my phone said he was in a forested area. The forested area, the Big Doy Peninsula, to be more specific. According to Monarch, there was a small hidden entrance to the Hollow Earth network in there. So, with no jetpack in sight, I dialed JJ's number. When he answered, I said, Hey, Jet, I need a ride. Quickly explain the situation. He needed a few minutes to finish up a radio show. Like, seriously? A radio show? Whatever. And he flew to my location in no time. I showed him the coordinates for our destination, jumped on his back, like the overgrown kid I am, and held on for dear life as he took off. Now, JJ descended below the trees, and we saw the Toga Evangelist right there in front of us, about 100 meters off. We zoomed toward him, but the Seatopian spotted us and reached into his, well, toga, and threw a rock at us. And then it exploded. Yeah, the rock exploded. In midair, right in front of my face. Poor old J- I mean, uh, <coughs> JJ. Lost control and crashed. Now, thankfully, the soft crown provided some cushioning. Okay, it, it wasn't that soft, but it was soft enough. Now, the toga evangelist starts shouting. A gift from the Guardian of Seatopia, so his warriors can smite our enemies. Now I need only drop one into the tunnel to sink this city and start a chain reaction to crumble the surface. Then the mighty Megalon will escape his imprisonment and return to Seatopia. Blah, blah, blah. He turned and walked toward the three meter hole just down the pathway. I forced myself to stand. Because I'm Rex Dart, Eskimo spy, damn it! and ran after the Toga party terrorist. He heard me coming and reared back to throw the grenade rock, but I grabbed his arm and it arced forward. We struggled a few more seconds till he punched me in the chest and hot damn, my ribs were cracked. Oh boy, the pain. My grip loosened and the Toga Evangelist threw the rock toward the entrance. I gripped my teeth and prepared to go to the big igloo in the sky. The actual building and not the spy organization, j just so we're clear. But uh, that's when my buddy JJ dove in front of the rock, intercepted it, tossed it back. I only had a few seconds to run before it exploded. I looked back and saw a crater where there once stood a certain Toga Evangelist. JJ stood to his full height and made a thumbs up. And you know what? I couldn't believe it. So after a good old-fashioned lie down to check my ribs, I contacted Igloo HQ. They quickly deployed a cleanup crew. They assured me that Monarch would be informed about Zootopia's tampering with the Hollow Earth network, and that repairs would be imminent. Then my buddy JJ said he had to return to that junk pile mecca, ugh, and help his human friends find a place to park it so they could return to Monster Island for a wedding? I don't know. Now, since I have friends in high places, I told, uh, J I mean, JJ, I'd make arrangements for them to move the mech to the Station Group Gardermon base. 
where it would be guarded by the Royal Norwegian Air Force. JJ gave me a thumbs up in reply. I love it when he does that. And I added that if they wanted faster transportation to and from the island, I'd personally escort them on the Hyperloop back to Monster Island. Now the nearest stop for it was at Monarch Outpost 71 in Hera. I leaned in close to old J uh, JJ and said, You know, you can't be too careful with Apex desperately clinging to their assets. The robot nodded, and uh, if I understood him correctly, he said he'd make sure I was on the guest list. We shook hands, and he flew away. It's, uh, it's been a while since I've attended a wedding. I could use a few days of vacation. I haven't been to Monster Island since I investigated the notorious board of directors when the place first reopened. But, uh, now I'm hearing something is different about them. Maybe I can find out why. And do you know why? Because I'm Rex Dart. Eskimo Spy. End mission log. Episode 99 Epilogue Rex Dart Eskimo Spy Starring Daniel DeManna as Rex Dart Written and edited by Nathan Marchand and Daniel DeManna Directed and produced by Nathan Marchand Music tracks included Rex Dart Eskimo Spy by The Nematodes Sound effects sourced from freesound.org and created by J.P. Gant our story segments were made possible by the generous MIFB Max members on Patreon, including executive producer Damon Noise. This is a fan production, and no copyright infringement is intended or implied. All characters, video clips, and audio clips belong to their respective copyright holders. MIFV is a Moonlighting Ninjas media production and a proud member of Pod Nation. Thank you for listening. Next time in episode 100, Fantasy Monster Island.